the innovation that's associated with the port is our business model. We are a state agency, we are managing a state asset, but yet we have uh, engaged a private entrepreneurial type approach. We're able to uh, perform all of the duties, all of the responsibilities, all of the activities here uh, without uh, putting any kind of a uh, tax or burden on any of the uh, taxpayers of the state of Indiana. Uh, the typical day starts around here uh, very early in the morning. A lot of the labor at the port, uh, the, uh, the uh, unions, the longshoremen and the operating engineers uh, are coming in to uh, identify the amount of work that uh, is, is going to be done that day, uh, how many folks will be needed. Uh, the various companies that are here all are bringing their workers in to, uh, to start out their day. Um, at, at, at that point, uh, then just everything breaks loose. Again, 30 companies located all together on, on, a, on a rather small plot of land, a 600 acre plot. Uh, and uh, uh, at that point, the rest of the day depends on what the needs of those companies are. We're in Indiana. We're in, we're in the central part of the United States. Uh, we are 18 miles across the lake from the third largest city in the United States. Yet, we will be having ships that have loaded in Europe, uh, have loaded in Mexico, uh, that have loaded uh, in Canada, that will be loading out to many of those, company, or those countries. Here, we also have all of the infrastructure that is available to support that third largest city in the, in the United States of Chicago. So we have the interstates. We have all seven of the class one railroads. Uh, we are connected to the inland river system. So we are connected to 20 states and 12,000 miles of the inland river. We are, we are connected to the Atlantic Ocean with the ships that will be in here. But all of those different options for Indiana, for the, for the businesses in Indiana, the, the employees who work for the companies here in Northwest Indiana, it is truly a, a global, uh, a global uh, environment that they work in, both for where they can sell their goods, but not only that, but where they can source their raw materials. Last year was a record year. Last year was the best year ever for the Port of Indiana Burris Harbor. Um, last year we brought in about 125 ships. We brought in into the harbor, uh, both into the public and the private docks, some 200 Great Lakes vessels. Uh, we also handled uh, about 500 of the inland river barges. Um, with that, a port allows or, 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 or the port strength that we have here is the intermodal capability of being able to switch from the maritime to the other modes. So we also brought in 12,000 rail cars and we also handle through this port some 300,000 truckloads per year. We are a steel port. The companies that are here are bringing in the raw materials for those companies. They are processing materials for them or they are handling the finished product. Um, with that. Over half the companies that are here are direct steel companies that handle material for the local mills. A lot of the other companies, like I said, are support companies. They are slag companies. They are uh, companies that handle uh, uh, other products. We have a grain elevator here. We have our own steel middle mini mill located here within the port, which is probably one of the largest recycling operations that you will ever find. Uh, they take uh, well over a million tons of scrap every year, melt it, uh, reform it, and have it within one or two steps of being back into our houses. The more we can ship via water, the smaller carbon footprint we put out, the less amount of, of, of fuel is consumed, um, and just it allows us the greatest economic advantages uh, over any other mode. So with that, we, we, we are looking at the economies that the water offers to us here at the port and interfacing those economies with the other flex, you know, with the, the flexibility I mentioned with the other modes. Like any other industry, it is constantly changing and the innovations that are coming out five years from now will amaze us as we look back at how antiquated it was that we did things five years ago. Since 2005, the port has not taken one dollar out of any of the Indiana State taxpayers' pockets. Um, we have been self-sustainable not only for our reinvestments on capital, but also all of our operating expenses. There is no one thing that you can point to. There's only a group effort, and we are the benefactor. You know, we 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 benefit from 
all of these companies their great plans, the great labor, the great location that we are here, and all of the different modes that we can, that we can provide to those folks uh, as uh, flexibility in their sales and their sourcing of raw materials.